In this video, we're going to look at solutions to linear systems. So when I look at what's on the screen here, I'm actually going to move from right to left. So I'm going to start with that box that says one solution. When we've been solving linear systems, we've been using three methods. First, we graphed them, which means we solved them graphically. And then we learned how to do elimination method. And then we learned how to do substitution method. Those are the three ways that we learned how to solve linear systems. And every time we did that, we were getting one solution. That means we were getting a, a point with an X and a Y, which is the place where the two graphs intersected or the values for X and Y that would, that would work in both equations. So we've been uh, doing linear systems with one solution. Uh, and on the screen in that one solution box, I have three examples of equations that we've been solving all, all this year. You can see that um, I could multiply the equations to, to solve them. Like the top example there, I would multiply maybe the, the one of the equations by 2, so they both have a 2y. In the second example, I'd probably multiply the bottom equation by 2, so they'd both have a 2y, one positive, one negative. And in the third equation, I could add or subtract, and the x's or y's would cancel. So um, nothing too out of the ordinary for those equations. But then we jump to the middle box here that says no solutions. Sometimes you're going to get linear systems that have no solution. And when we were, if we we're graphing them, it's because the two lines are never going to intersect. They're going to be parallel to each other. If we solve them algebraically, you'll notice the middle box top equation, 3x plus 2y equals 38, and 3x plus 2y equals 29. That's not going to have a solution because how can 3x plus 2y be equal to 38, but then in the other equation be equal to 29? That's not possible, right? So if you get two equations that are equivalent on the variable side only, then that's not going to have solutions. Um, if you can multiply one or both of the equations to get that to happen, it's not going to have any solutions. So in the second example in the no solutions box, you can see 4x minus y equals 11 and 8x minus 2y equals 35. If I multiply that top equation by 2, I'm going to get 8x minus 2y equals 22. That's almost the same exact equation that, that the second one was, right? It was 8x minus 2y equals 22. And the one below is 8x minus 2y equals 35. So if the variable parts are exactly the same, but the numbers on the other side of the equal sign are different, then that's going to have no solutions. And the third example in the no solutions box, if I multiply the top equation by 3, you'll notice that it'll be negative 9x and 21y and negative 27, which makes the variables match. They're both going to be opposites of each other, but the, the numbers, the constants are going to be different. So again no solutions so then we look at the last box and we're working right to left here so we're actually looking at the infinite solutions box here on the left if two equations are exactly the same they're going to have infinite solutions and that should make sense right two graphs exactly the same are just going to be the same thing on the graph paper twice they're going to be overlapping completely every instance of a point is going to be the same for both graphs. So um, of course 4x minus 3y equals 18 and 4x minus 3y equals 18 has unlimited solutions because they're the same equation twice. So it says if the two equations are equivalent on both sides it's going to have infinite solutions. The second and third example here are not equivalent at a first glance but if I multiply one or both equations involved and everything becomes exactly the same, then that would be another example of infinite solutions. So the second example in the infinite solutions box says 2x minus 4y equals 9 and 8x minus 16y equals 36. That bottom equation is just four times the top equation, right? If I multiply everything in the top equation by four, I'm going to get 8x minus 16y equals 36. That is an example of two equations that are equivalent, just not at a first glance, right? So if you can find a number that multiplying by it makes them exactly the same, well, then that's going to be a system that has infinite solutions. The last example here um, 
if you multiply the top equation by 2 or negative 2, that's when it gets problematic, right? The top equation multiplied by 2 would be 2x minus 6y equals 12. Um, the two equations are complete opposites of each other, right? Um, the graphic does say they have to be exactly the same, but think about it. If something's exactly the opposite, well, it's also the same because, you know, you can multiply by negative 1 to make them exactly the same, right? So if I multiply the top equation by negative 2, then everything will be exactly the same. So when you're given a linear system, most of the time there'll be one solution, but every now and then there will be no solutions or infinite solutions. And it's up to you sometimes to have to recognize how many solutions it will have. You can use all this information on the screen to determine it. You can also try to solve them and see what happens, right? You might try to solve it and get into some problems and realize, oh, maybe I can't solve this. Don't forget, you can also graph these, right? If it has one solution, they will intersect. If it has no solutions, they will never intersect. And if it has infinite solutions, the two graphs will be one right on top of each other. You'll only see one graph. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.